Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at another keyboard from LumenKey. I previously reviewed the LumenKey 80, which was a great TKL keyboard, uh, screwless design, very interesting. And I reached out to them when I saw that they were selling the LumenKey 65. This is an in-stock keyboard. And I asked if I could review one. They said, oh, certainly. So they sent me out a unit for review, and they also sent me out an extra plate, an aluminum plate. I do believe this one comes with a uh, PC plate, uh, but I'm not sure. So we're going to go ahead and check it out. This is a pre-built version of it. I'm not sure if they sell it in a um, kit. I think they do, but I'll check it when I get to the technical specifications. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we've got in the case. Ooh, very nice. Very nice indeed. Well, before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have in the accessories here. Huh. We've got some extra keycaps, and they are die sub. They appear to be pretty thick, I would guess, in the 1.5 millimeter range. We have some extra screws, as well as what appear to be switch pads. Yeah, they do appear to be poron switch pads for the um, switches. All right, looks like we have the um, the wireless edition. We've got a couple of extra gaskets. We've got the 2.4. And once again, we have uh, the pale green tactile, I believe. This is uh, the one that came with the Lumen Key 80, and I really like this switch. Oh, no, these are pale green linears. The Viridian, I think, are the tactiles. I'm, I'm not sure, but these are... Gatorons, and I think they're um, exclusive Gatoron for Lumen Key. They're a nice linear, long pull, probably about a 3.6 to 3.8 millimeter travel, with a nice bottom out, nice and sharp. So let's uh, oh, don't want to lose those extra gaskets. And close that up. We also have a branded wire switch and keycap puller. Lumenkey, very nice. These are my favorites to use. We have both an Allen wrench and a screwdriver. I'm going to guess the one is for the um, the case, and the other one's probably going to be for the PC plate or the plate PCB assembly. We have a nice little gift card here. It was assembled by Dan, number four, warranty policy, as well as the basic instructions. An introduction of use so it looks like we do have an on and off switch below the right shift key for the wireless mode and we have mode switch Mac and Windows switch and how to reset it all right and we also have a very nice USB cable actually got the uh, other one I'm using on my desk right now um, it's a very thick nylon braided with uh, gold contacts on both the USB-A and USB-C, or gold plated, I should say. Um, and it's a nice length USB-C to USB-A cable. Very nice. Let's put these all back in here so they do not get lost. I was wondering why it was so hard. It's got staples in it. I think one bit me. Alright, let's see how thick these keycaps are. One point six millimeters. I'm starting to see a lot of keycaps with that body width of one point six millimeters. And I gotta say, especially when they're PVT, they bring the fog. So it looks like we have the Mac keys, we have a step caps lock, and a couple of um Looks like a replacement for the enter in the backspace, as well as some novelty keycaps in the different rows. We'll probably play around with them in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and set them in here for right now. Here is uh, something that I noticed on the Lumen Key 80, as well as some other keyboards. They include the keyboard in a nice uh, shrink wrap plastic. Basically, they're asking for you to check the board surface, check for any anomalies any defects any scratches anything that might be a problem um, 
because if there is, then you can send it back like this to get a, another one. But if it's not, then you can go ahead and open it. So taking a look real quick at the body, the back, bottom. I see no issues whatsoever. So let's go ahead and open it up. See, it's even got that void sticker. And here we are with the Lumen P65. I got to say, I do love the design with that light right there and that little bit of gold as well as the gold or copper weight down at the bottom. I guess that's more of a copper than it is gold. But this is a nicely laid out 65% with a blocker. Oh, and it sounds pretty nice stock. I got to say. So let's check out what we have under here. That does appear to be a PC plate. We should only have lights, I think, under the caps lock indicator. And, oh no. Well, on the Lumen Key, we actually, on the Lumen Key 80, we actually did have um, a caps lock indicator, but there are no RGBs on this one. I almost want to put the step caps lock on there, but let's stick for stock with stock for right now. Now, for an in-stock keyboard and the choices of colors and the fact that it's a, you know, customizable keyboard, I think it has a couple different layouts. We do have plate-mounted stabilizers. Now let's check these out. Oh, they're quite well attached to the plate. Go ahead and pop them out real quick. Oh, no, we do have alternate layouts. They're hiding underneath there. All right. And it does appear that we have the um, the availability to put in uh, screw and stabilizers as well, which uh, I will probably do when I come back to this keyboard at some point in the near future. But today we're going to do a stock test with the PC plate, and then we'll switch out the aluminum plate and see the difference between the two. But it's nice to see that we have those alternating layouts because actually does it have an ISO? Well, the plate doesn't allow for an ISO. Though, oh, this plate looks like it does. And it even might allow for a couple other ones. So I have to check it out. Um, despite being plate-mounted stabilizers, it's actually quite nice and well-tuned. Let's check out the bottom. All right, we've got eight screws holding the top half of the case to the bottom half of the case. How about we take a look at what's on the inside? All right, we've got the eight screws out. Let's go ahead and flip this back over. And carefully disassemble. All right, so it looks like we have a nice light diffuser that's going all the way through the aluminum case up to the top. And we can see there's actually three small LEDs right there. And we can see that we have the barbell um, gaskets, which provide for an adequate amount of flex, but not too crazy. And if we carefully lift this up, you can see that we have two layers. One is appears to be a poron with PET on one side, and the other one appears to be an EVA behind the plate with what looks to be an EVA foam between the plate and the PCB. Now here we do have a ribbon cable. Um, always make sure to be extremely gentle with these. They are quite fragile. So if we take a look here. Here we have the different layouts. So it look, does look like we can do um, the US the uh, ISO enter. And it actually looks like we could do oh it looks like we could do a Tsangan bottom row as well. Very nice. Very nice indeed. I gotta say I like that.
Looks like we have the ability for the split space, or the split backspace, I should say. Just that cap slot, as well as a split uh, left shift, so we can do a full ISO on here. And this is the version one of the Lumen Key 65. I've got to say, this is a pretty good one for coming right out of the gate. We do have the daughter board here with what appears to be the aluminum weight. All right, we will open it again after we do a sound test so that we can uh, hear what the aluminum plate sounds like. Of curiosity, we do have an IXPE sheet. Looks like we have IXPE, but we do not have um, PET that I can see. So, just curious out of that. There's a some have been using IXPE and PET, some just IXPE, some just PET, and some neither one. Um, obviously, the construction goes a long way, but adding those layers can definitely affect the sound of the keyboard. But out of the box stock, this sounds more on the, the thocky side, in my opinion. I love the space bar. That's a lovely stabilizer. When I come back to it, I definitely uh, will add a PET layer and then uh, we'll probably build it out with either a Tsangan bottom row or ISO to see how it looks like differently. And I actually had a different set of keycaps set out for this, but we're going to go ahead and stick with their keycaps as they're nice and thick 1.6 millimeters and they look really nice on this beautiful red but yeah not a single sign of varnish or damage anyway it is very nicely finished all right okay I'll close that up and hold it together let me go ahead and get our screws back in there Easy to assemble and disassemble. Uh, it is not the screwless design, but it's still a really nice design. Now let's check out this little header light we've got back here. And ah, it's red as well. All right, it is a via keyboard, but it appears that it is not yet in the registry. So it does have a selection of different plates. It looks like aluminum, FR4, and PC are the options. And yes, you can do the Tsangan bottom row, as well as the ISO, and no split space bar, just split back space. All right. And the, of course, the step caps log. I like that it's no flex cut. I mean, don't get me wrong, flex is all right, but when it's per key flex on both the plate and the PCB, I think it becomes just a little bit too flexy. Um, if there's such a thing, I know some people will be like, there's no such thing. All right, so I was able to open it with Via, but I wanted to um, check the QMK source for a couple of things and I cannot find it anywhere. Um, I truly hope that they're not using that fake Via that other manufacturers you're using, I'm going to reach out to LumenKey and find out um, if there is QMK source and where it can be found because it's not in the QMK repository. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and record the sound test with it as it is stocked with the PC plate, and then I'm going to go ahead and open it up and we'll install the aluminum plate and see what kind of difference we get between the two. So I'll be right back. All right, so I almost started to put this together before I realized that the aluminum plate does not have the slots for the uh, plate mounted stabilizers that come stock. So I've gone ahead and picked out a set of ACO screw in stabilizers. Um, I've used these before without any um, 
anything bad to report. Uh, I did wish that I had them in a different color, but hey, blue and uh, red kind of, you know, contrast each other well. So I thought maybe that would work out good. Like I said, I'm not going to go with the Sangin or any different uh, combinations right now because I just want to stick to the differences in the plate. Any other differences I might make might affect the differences in the sound test. So let me go ahead and load up these stabilizers and then we'll get to rebuilding this again. All right, so once you've got the stabilizers in place and you know that they're good to go, we can go ahead and reassemble the keyboard. That's one thing to check if you are going to be using your IXPE sheets. Some of them require you to put it on before you actually add the stabilizers. But if they have these cutouts, then you're able to just slide this right into place, which makes it a lot easier. All right, so here you can actually use the screws with the studs that came with it, or you can just go ahead and do like I prefer to do in most cases, just put some switches in the corner pieces to make sure that everything is well aligned. So we've got enough switches to hold this together. And then let's go ahead and add this piece of foam. Although, yeah, we put this first, then we put the, um, if you notice I have the uh, gaskets off to the side because they're quite jumpy, so I don't want them in place until I'm actually going to set the PCB down. So let's go ahead and get, lift this up and slide the ribbon cable into the connector. Once we have it in, lock it into place. Small tug just to make sure it's good and that line should be straight. Now just to make sure, plug it in real quick. Make sure that ribbon cables make the contact. Yep, I appear so. We're good. So let's go ahead and add the gaskets. These little suckers are good for wanting to get lost. Oh, yeah, they're just trying to slide out of here. All right, once we're sure that the gasket, the bottom um, stud, is into the piece or into the case, then we can go ahead and put the top on. Holding it together, we're gonna flip it over. All right, now we have this lovely keyboard built with the aluminum plate and screw in stabilizers. So we are making two changes the plate and the stabilizers. We go ahead and load up the switches and keycaps, and we'll come back for the comparison sound test and then close out with my box and the technical section since it did come pre-built. All right, so we've now done the sound test with the aluminum plate. One thing that I noticed with the both the PC plate and the aluminum plate is that the top row for some reason um, has a more deeper tone than the rest of the rows are very uniform but that top row it's deeper and it sounds more I don't know it sounds more solid I kind of wish that the rest of the keys because you can hear it go up the pitch but on both like I said on both the PC plate and the aluminum plate. I don't know why that top row sounds that way. Um, I will include short spots of the sound test here in between, but the full sound test will be at the end of the video. All right, next, let's go ahead and see about the wireless capability. Now we do have 2.4 as well as USB. And now um, I personally, I'm not the biggest fan of these type of switches, and actually, I honestly missed this when I first saw it, because not only do you have to take off the keycap, but you need, I mean, there's no way you're going to get in there with the finger, but if you can see right in there, there is the little switch, so let's disconnect it, and there's the switch to turn it into the wireless mode. Oh, no, that's the light. Function Q will put us into Bluetooth. So I need to do the mode switch. All right. So you got to do Function Tab, 
now we're in here so I gotta I guess I press and hold to get the pairing mode all right so we're in pairing mode now and there we go oh well that's that's nice it's nice and quick um, I thought there would be a light right there to let us know that we are in you know that we're on but that that is not the case so we have quick connectivity over 2.4 and over Bluetooth, which is always nice. Like I said, it's one thing to have to pull a keycap off to turn a switch on or off, but to need an actual tool to get in there to turn it on seems a little, I don't know, unintuitive? That's just my opinion. I mean, otherwise, this is a great keyboard, but I also, I wonder about QMK. Is this built on QMK? Or is this built on a closed source software that just uses the VIA protocol for communicating with the VIA interface? Because I have looked everywhere. Now you can flash a, QM, uh, a firmware, but that's it. They have the, the executable. What if I want to program more into this keyboard, some functionality that's not there in VIA? and I want to go into QMK and change things up, I don't have that ability. That's just not an option. Just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Lumen T65, an in-stock three-mode aluminum 65% with multiple layouts available. It does come preloaded with a PC plate, but the extra plates in both aluminum and FR4 allow for the multiple layouts. It is available in black, red, silver, and e creamy white. It does come compatible with VIA, but there does not seem to be any QMK source. It only has a handful of LEDs to show mode changes and has a on and off switch that is extremely recessed underneath the right shift key. It is available in both a bare bone version and a pre built version that comes with Die Sub Cherry PBT keycaps and Gatoron Silva linear switches. This keyboard comes weighing in at 1352 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 18.5 millimeters above the surface, while the back sits at 32.5 millimeters, providing for a typing angle of 10 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $139 barebone and $179 pre-built with switches and keycaps. All right, so, I mean, this is a very nice uh, 65%, though there has been a plethora of really nice aluminum 65% keyboards, but unfortunately a lot of them are in the group buy model, while this one is in stock. You order it, they're gonna ship it out. Um, I would like to know about where QMK is and I would have liked a little bit more variance with the extra keycaps they offer to be able to do all the different layouts. They just kind of included a few, they included a few novelty keys, but there could have been more. So, I mean, cause they are adding, I mean, it's 139 bare bone and 179 pre-built. So $40 when you're buying it bundled, usually you should be getting, I mean, I know plenty of other key ca or keyboards, such as Akko keyboards, they usually include the entire set, um, you know, on a pre-built keyboard. So you're getting switches, extra switches. Um, so that would be nice to see. Now I have one more 65% uh, custom to build and I'm gonna be doing a video about the 65% kind of comparing them, get my, you know, opinions about them out, which one I think personally I would buy if like I could only pick one. Um, I think I know which one's gonna be, but like I said, I've still got the Neo 65 to build and I want to add them all together and be able to compare them all head to head to kind of, you know, provide that. now. Some of them are closed source software. Most of them are QMK via and this one is only via anyway uh, Like I said, the only thing that I found odd with this one is the fact that the uh, the top row Is much deeper and sounds 
deeper and muted, more muted than the rest of the rose. And it's probably because of the construction, um, but I don't know why it, because it's pretty significant. Um, again, I provided clips, short clips of the sound test. Here, I will be providing full sound test first with the uh, PC plate and then with the aluminum plate so that you guys can hear the difference. Um, and if you guys got any questions or comments about this, I will be coming back to it at some point. There's a couple of mods I want to do to it. I want to see if I can kind of make the, the rose sound more uniform and I think I can bring a little bit more life to it. Not that it doesn't sound good, but I think that it could sound much better. And I'm actually surprised I, I like the aluminum plate on this one, even though it really does kick up the pitch but I think with some different switches and some mods I can get it to where I really want it to sound like anyway I do hope that you enjoyed this build and review until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on